mass demonstration outside the South African Parliament targets international pharmaceutical companies, as well as making the wider moral argument on the availability of cheap AIDS drugs. These sufferers are fighting an internal enemy. Despite the fact that over 400,000 South Africans have died of AIDS to date, President Thabo Mbeki has consistently denied that combating the epidemic is a national priority. There is more, much more money being spent on everything else but life for people. Um, and that is not just for people living with HIV. And therefore we are demanding that government um, spend less on arms and more money gets um, put into building the health um, care infrastructure. We are not taking this seriously. The government don't take us seriously. They think we are playing. We are not playing. That is serious because we will leave our children behind. Well, we will look after them when we are gone. Zama and Zandi's mother and her political activist husband took to the streets during the 1980s to protest against apartheid. The twins' father died of AIDS, leaving his HIV-positive widow to bring up the children. She no longer has the energy nor the resources to join the protesters, but is bitter towards Mbeki. He know where we come from. We were there to help him to be the president. So why not he can help us to be healthy? We are the South Africans, so he has to help us. We don't have to die, but he, there is a chance not to, not, not to die. Because he, they say they, there is a medicine. Her twins are HIV negative, saved like thousands of others through a short course of antiretroviral drugs given during labour. A project which was implemented by Cape Provincial Government in defiance of national government policy. But the stigma attached to AIDS is still so great neighbours turn on sufferers in their midst. If they found out you are HIV positive, they don't treat you like a human being, like you are healthy, they think you are a prisoner. Now national policy, the Drugs in Pregnancy Project costs five US dollars a head, but the state doesn't routinely give the triple therapy drug cocktail to those with HIV. If there's a country that knowingly fails to protect and help its people when they are dying of a treatable illness, then we should consider sanctions against that country. Vague future plans to provide medication aren't enough. About 4.2 million South Africans are HIV positive and 7 million are expected to die from the disease within a decade. We aren't actually seeing the whole picture and there are many, many more thousands of children out there that have very minimal symptoms or no symptoms at all of the disease. You know, and all these children are basically like uh, time bombs waiting to explode. At some stage or another their disease is going to manifest and they are going to be coming in in large numbers. Many South Africans have denied the existence of AIDS, a situation which is beginning to change as the death toll mounts, even among children. The festivities at this Johannesburg school are in celebration of a little boy's birthday. And Kosi Johnson, the outspoken AIDS activist, is turning 11. But the boy who spoke out in front of the world now lies comatose at the home of his foster mother. What Nkosi has done is he's given AIDS a face in Africa, not only South Africa. He is being called the Prince of Africa. He seems to have created a, almost a unification in this country. And he's been able to be an outlet for emotions. Nkosi was two when his mother died. His father's whereabouts are unknown. His foster mother couldn't afford expensive antiretroviral drugs, but has provided love, stability, and good nutrition for her son and other children. If I can make a difference, I'm going to make a difference. Of course, he wanted us to be caring for 15,000 people by the end of this year. I will work towards that because that's my commitment to my son. For Gail Johnson and Kosi's Haven, a home for HIV-positive mothers and their children is just the beginning. It will require many more similar homes to provide for the tens of thousands of women who carry the burden of supporting families infected with the virus. Most of our women, they like from 
an abusive situation. And people don't stay into that situation because they like it. They stay because they need something into their stomach. They need a roof on their head. So they, they stay in that situation just for survival. But the woman, for them to know that they're infected, it's only when they go for a test, if, if they decide of which it's very rare, but mainly during their pregnancy when they're going for the antenatal visit. But men know, and mainly they blame it put on a female. That's why the rate is so high. The shelter can only survive through donations and international support. Here, mothers can comfort each other and share the burden of knowing that their children will be orphaned. And Kosi's wish is that HIV-positive mothers and their children do not have to face the threat of premature separation. AIDS will orphan an estimated 4 million children by the year 2005. It is the only place that I can make my rich one. And secondly, that uh, it's keeping us safe because you are vulnerable by the time you are positive and you don't know where to go, you don't have money to look after yourself and things like that. So you just end up being at another man's house where you reinfect yourself again. For Rosa and her son Ismail, both carry the HIV virus. She is very ill, he is yet to show symptoms. Medication which would allow them to lead normal lives is available. Without it, she is struggling to hold on. I try to talk to him and he doesn't uh, take it in easily. He always tell me like he'll pray for me so that I must be better. And sometimes he makes me feel that I need him and he needs me the most. So for him, he's sort of an encouragement to carry on living because without him, I would have given up a long time. So he's still, when I look at him and think, oh God, I can't raise this poor child like this. I know he will be cared for, but at least don't be the same without his mom. Maybe. The sad part of, of HIV is there's no reverse. There's no doubt about it. Once you're positive, that's why some people, mainly the, the males, they cannot stand to like being, after being diagnosed and think, oh, I'll live with it. They commit suicide. And with the females, mainly they think of their kids. For them not to commit suicide, they think, oh my gosh, my child may will think I've been a coward. And then they want to die leaving their, 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 their kids in happy hands. What shall we do, sing these women, bravely confronting society with their illness? Unity voiced in song, just as it was during the struggle against apartheid. To provide effective drugs for an HIV-positive South African currently costs about US$1,000 a year, an impossible sum for the state and most individuals. But alternatives are available in the form of generic copies of drugs manufactured by the major pharmaceutical companies. These companies are aggressively protecting their patents, fighting a court action to prevent the South African government from importing and distributing these drugs. We have an internal enemy in our borders today. As I speak, the children that are around me here have an internal enemy. About one-fifth of our population is being is succumbing to this internal enemy. What are we doing about the internal enemy that we're worried about, this potential external threat out there? You know, if this was an alien force and an alien country attacking our one-fifth of our population on one part of our border, the army, the whole country would be up in arms. You have a responsibility A as a mother, B as a woman, and C as a South African. If, if this is happening, how can we keep quiet about this? How can we watch these babies dying? How can we watch children and women getting raped and keep quiet about it? Because if we keep quiet about it, then somehow we're accountable. If the government wins the legal case, it could import drugs from India or Brazil. Intellectual property rights don't address human misery. Nomfumelelo, which means success, is just 26. She's dying and will leave behind two daughters. We are, we are the family animals because we are four. Yeah. Build a house for three, bre three bedrooms. One for the other two, one for the other two, and one for us. And to be, to bring them the, I don't know, <laughs> but we dream of good things like 
they will grow up in a family difficult to talk about that because it can happen.